Hello, uh, my name is Dmitry Popov and I work in Green Balkans NGO in Bulgaria. Uh, here I want to, to share with you our experience with efforts for removal of invasive plant species uh, within a life project which was international life project and we have been uh, working at one small wetland, coastal wetland on the Bulgarian Black Sea coast. This is Pomoria Lake which is a uh, Natura 2000 site, ACI Pomoria. Uh, first, a few words about the site. Uh, it is a natural hypersaline lagoon situated along the Bulgarian Black Sea coast. Uh, it is relatively small site, 760 hectares. This is the, uh, the size of the lagoon, but the Natura 2000 site is uh, quite bigger because it includes also some marine area. It's about 2,000 hectares. And because of uh, harboring specific ecosystems and species, it has been declared a protected site in 2001. Uh, and in 2002, it was uh, listed in the Ramsar Convention as a Ramsar site. And when Bulgaria joined the European Union, it was also declared uh, SPA and SCI respectively. Some pictures of the site. A bit more information about the biodiversity of the site. Um, it is not very rich in fish. It has only one small connection to the sea. Uh, eight species have been recorded, also 21 species of amphibians and reptiles, and 31 species of mammals. Uh, it has very rich diversity of birds, so 271 species have been recorded, and it has a very special role in the breeding of some species in Bulgaria, playing a very high importance at national and regional level. Uh, especially for some rare species like the mm, black-winged stilt, the sandwich tern, avocet, commonant little tern, Kentish plover. Uh, the habitats listed in the habitats directive that are found at the site are, include uh, coastal lagoons, which is the, the highest representative uh, habitat, but also embryonic shifting dunes, shifting dunes along the shoreline with Amophila arenaria, southern riparian galleries, Salicornia, and other annuals colonizing Matensan. This is a uh, habitat that is lowly represented in Bulgaria, maybe three or five sites maximum, and Pomori is one of the most representative and also Mediterranean salt meadows and Pannonic salt steps and salt marshes. Uh, plants of Pomoria Lake, uh, during uh, development of a management plan in 2008-2009, 87 species have been uh, described and uh, recorded for the site. Some are quite specific for the coastal dunes habitats, like the sea rocket, sand pit napuit, uh, the sea holly, Trachomitum venetum, a species uh, which is almost uh, extinct in Bulgaria. Only probably two sites are holding the population of that species. And as I said, in 2010, a management plan was drawn, and uh, one of the important threats for the natural habitats and for the, um, for the plant species was uh, identified the invasive alien species, Amorpha furdicosa and Spartium yunceum. Uh, the locations of these have been uh, monitored during that time, and uh, the main location is along the, the sand dunes that are formed uh, at the, the sand speed that is separating the lagoon from the sea. Uh, in 2010, 
11, a live project has started, which is international live project uh, with partners from Italy, from France, and also we are partners, Green Balkans, working with some activities at the Pomoria site, and we have decided to include the eradication of the invasive plant species as one of the activities. So we started then with the efforts. Uh, these are the, the habitats that are targeted within the project. Again, the coast of lagoons is the, the highest proportion because all the sites around Europe, which are in Italy, in Po Delta, in Molentargius, in Sardinia, in mm, Camargue, in France, all of them are hosting uh, coastal lagoons and all of them are hosting some salt works, either working or not non-working. And some of the main threats that were identified have been progressive declining water circulation for the coastal lagoons, but also the invasive alien species for specifically for the uh, dunes habitats at Pomoria. So first we have started with a detailed uh, mapping of the di distribution of the invasive species, uh, as we had some data also from 2008, 2010, that was, the mapping was made in 2012, we were able to, to compare and to, to, to prove that and to be convinced that there is an increase of the distribution of the invasive species along the sand dunes. So the next step was to start the removal of the invasive plant species and uh, because it is a protected site and the main target species that we want to prevent from the invasive plant species are herbaceous. Uh, they are smaller, uh, we decided, and also it's a protected site not to use any chemical methods, but to concentrate on uh, chem um, mechanical removal. Uh, also, the distribution and the, the site, as I said, is quite small, so we were considering that a uh, concentrated effort in small areas for each individual plant or just a clump of bushes will be successful in removing the whole plants and also managing to remove the roots. So the target area, as I said, it's about five kilometer long sand spit that is uh, separating the lagoon and we were mm, using mechanical methods which was spades, some other tools, digging and trying to remove all the roots of the plants. Uh, we have involved volunteers, uh, students in the activities, so we have made two years efforts. First we started in October 2012 and then we continued in next year in May, June and then we finished the, the activities by October and November 2013. Uh, except Amorpha, the other target species, which was with less distribution and uh, was the Spartium yunceum, it was forming quite large bushes. We also used for some of the areas uh, mechanical cutters. Uh, because to, uh, to reach to the, the, tr the trunks and the roots, it was needed to, to cut the branches and to open the ground. But also in some of the areas where the amorpha has been uh, infesting much larger areas, we were using uh, the, the mower to remove them. We wish to thank a lot to the volunteers. Then the follow-up monitoring was made in the next years, in 2014, 2015. Unfortunately, we have uh, seen that for the Amorpha fruticosa, all that effort that we have made was very partly successful at many of the sites, despite a lot of digging and trying to remove all the roots, even if very small parts of the roots at a depth more than 50 centimeters was left they managed to, to grow again. Uh, for the Spartium, it was successful. All the plants have been removed with digging the, the roots and cutting the, the trunks and the, 
the branches, but for the Amorpha, it was a bit of a disappointment that we have used much more effort of the volunteers for us, and to see that even from small parts they grow again. Mm, not all of the mm, of all of the plants have managed to uh, grow again, but still a percent, something like probably up 50 percent of the Amorpha that was uh, treated was regenerating. So our conclusion is that for Spartium, oh, it was successful method to use the target mechanical removal. For Amorpha, mm, it is not a fully successful method and probably the use of herbicides can be SIC or the other uh, methods that we were thinking and unfortunately are not usable at the site is to, to plant trees because on the sand dunes it is not possible to have willows or poplars there and also grazing is not possible at the site because it's very specific along the coast. Thank you for your attention and you're welcome for any questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Popov. Some questions? Hello. First of all, congratulations for your great project. It was very interesting. <laughs> and <Thank you. laughs> I, was, I was wondering whether you have considered to uh, investigate a little further on uh, whether or not repeated cutting of the Amorpha would uh, succeed. I read you did a second cutting and that was not successful. But I was wondering perhaps if you uh, continue to uh, uh, remow the, the area, re, uh, look for sprouts and, and do that for a period of time, maybe one year every month or something like that, perhaps that would be more successful. Probably we shall try also this year to, to do it again, but from the monitoring, because we have done it for two years, and we have done the removal, as I said, 2013, 2012 to 2013. Uh, then we, when we see in 2014 that they are growing again, we repeated the cutting. Uh, but last year, there wasn't a short, a significant decrease from this. For some of the plants, it was a third cutting. 12, 13, 14 years. So I wouldn't say it was successful. So, But probably in longer term, I don't know how many years we must cut it until it removes. I have seen here some of the experience that was showing something like two, three years for Hungary with combined with grazing that after two, three years, you can turn it more or less into a grassland. But Since you don't really have many other options for treatment because uh, you said you can't use grazing, you can't use herbicides, and so on, perhaps it's the only available option, you know, to persist on uh, trying to cut them down. Yeah, this is the only option, and uh, because it's a relatively small site, our aim is to, to remove it totally, because, you know, in only one plant there, so producing that from one plant, we have seen it from 2008 to 2012, in four years, we can say m it was more than doubled the area that was covered by the Amorpha. And uh, the, the, the conditions there are not very favorable. I mean, it's dry on one hand. On the other hand, it's hyper saline. And still, they managed to find some good conditions to, to grow. Thank you. Um, do you know the persistence of soil seed bank of spartium unsum and how long does uh, it take to re-sprout or to, to germinate from seeds? Because it's a curious situation that you simply uh, destroyed it and it's not there anymore. I'm, I mean, every year it's producing a lot of seeds probably and also the seeds were probably the source of coming uh, in the past to this area. No, I have no idea how long, but probably some of other people here, which are more better specialists on the Amorpha, can say, because I have seen for the black locust, Spartium. ah, for Spartium, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I don't have an idea how long they can. The family of Spartium at least suggests that it has a 
uh, seeds that stay viable for a long time in the soil. It's very typical for the family to have very viable seeds in seed bank. So we shall s continue anyway with the monitoring and see if it somewhere grows, but from the monitoring we have done after completing the removal, <coughs> it was very encouraging for us not to see because we have removed all that, but of course we couldn't remove all the seeds that were produced on the site. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. And the last um, presentation will be